Get yourself ready for the most comprehensive prompting tutorial guide on 11 labs that exists on all the interwebs. So without further ado, affiliate link in the description, let's go. So let's now go ahead and discuss prompting in 11 labs. So 11 labs provides a resource on prompting. And over here, you can see that first it starts off with the instructions when it comes to pausing. It says there's a few ways to introduce a pause or break and influence the rhythm and cadence of the speaker. The most consistent way is programmatically using the syntax. And then you see this right here in between the angled brackets. This right here specifies the time. So over here they have 1.5s, which is one and a half seconds. Now they do say this will create an exact and natural pause in the speech, but I'm gonna show you in a second that it actually doesn't work too well. And I was actually very displeased by it. So it goes on to say that it's not just added silence between words, but the AI has an actual understanding of the syntax and will add a natural pause. However, since it's more than just inserted silence, how the AI handles the these pauses can vary. And again, I'm going to show that to you in a second, but it was less than ideal for me. It says, as usual, the voice used plays a pivot role in the output. Some voices, those trained with a few uhs and ahs in them, have shown to sometimes insert those vocal mannerisms during the pauses, like a real speaker might. I do want to point out that for the audio that I submitted in order to train my voice, I did not have uh and ahs and ums. I specifically made sure of that. Now, this part is extremely extremely important. It says break time should be described in seconds and the AI can handle pauses of up to three seconds in length and can be used in speech synthesis and via the API. It's not yet available for projects. That's okay, but please remember that it can only be up to three seconds, which is a little bit unfortunate because I can't see why it would be difficult to program into the system that how many ever seconds they specify here, just have that be the break. I don't understand why that's extremely difficult, but I digress. So in order to test the pause function, I'm going to make 11 labs say this in my voice. It's gonna say, let's test this feature out. I'll make it quiet for a few seconds. And then we have a 2.5 second break, as you can see here. I used their code identically. I actually copied and pasted it, whatever was in between the angled brackets. And then I'll say, now you have to go quickly subscribe to my channel. So let's see how that comes out after I click generate. Let's test this feature out. I'll make it quiet for a few seconds. So he's, uh... Now you have to go quickly subscribe to my channel. Do you see what I mean with the whole songies, ha? Huh? It sounds so strange and I don't know why it's in there. So I went ahead, I changed it to three seconds now and I'll go ahead and generate it and I'll play it for you. Hopefully it'll clear it up, but let's see. Let's test this feature out. I'll make it quiet for a few seconds. And so we, so yeah, as you can see, it's doing it again. And if we follow along with the prompt document by 11 labs, they also provide alternatives for having a pause in your speech, but they do say that these options are inconsistent and might not always work. And that is just including a simple dash or the M dash, so the longer dash, and you can even add multiple dashes. I've played around with this. I've also played around with the ellipsis, adding the dot, dot, dot. And I'm telling you the best way thus far still is this line of code right here. And it's pretty simple. Again, you don't need to understand code. You just have to change this seconds feature right here. And I just want to reiterate, don't make it longer than three seconds in length. So now let's talk about pronunciation. It says here that in certain instances, you may want the model to pronounce a word, name, or phrase in a specific way. Pronunciation can be specified using a standardized pronunciation alphabets. Currently, we support the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, and the CMU, ARPABET. Pronunciations are specified by wrapping words using the speech synthesis markup language, SSML, phoneme tag. So in order to use this feature, we need to wrap the desired word or phrase in this right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna problem solve this for you. So you're gonna watch me literally eat my words right now because I went and tried to research IPA, which is the International Phonetic Alphabet. And it looks like this, guys. This is Egyptian hieroglyphics. I have enough Python in my brain that I don't need to learn another 
really, really complicated thing. So I think what I'm going to do is I will leave this up to the experts because I went down a rabbit hole of going on Reddit, trying to figure out if there's any tools, like if I could just say something and it could translate it for me and kind of transcribe it into IPA style symbols for that exact pronunciation, but there honestly isn't anything. So unless you know of a grad student in this type of science, I would say that the best thing to do as far as pronunciation is concerned is to just let it be. But honestly, this is something that Eleven Labs has to figure out because they are making a lot of money off of their subscribers and they've gotten really good at the whole speech thing. So they might be the ones to put it out. They might be the ones to have a tool right on Eleven Labs where if I say something like meow new, they're gonna be able to put that into IPA and then I can simply just copy and paste that in and then the voice clone should be able to mimic the pronunciation exactly as I had done it. There should be an easier way than to tell your paying subscribers that you gotta learn this Egyptian hieroglyphics language in order to have the voice clone pronounce things correctly. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with me on that? So now let's talk about emotion and then we'll actually try it out. So they say that if you want the AI to express a specific emotion, the best approach is to write in a style similar to that of a book. To find good prompts to use, you can flip through some books and identify words and phrases that convey the desired emotion. For instance, you can use dialogue tags to express emotions, such as he said, comma, space, confused, comma, space, or he shouted angrily. These types of prompts will help the AI understand the desired emotional tone and try to generate a voiceover that accurately reflects it. With this approach, you can create highly customized voiceovers that are perfect for a variety of applications. Here's the issue I have with this, that if I type in, are you sure about that? He said confused, don't test me, he shouted angrily. What it does is it always reads that he said confused and he shouted angrily. But there's no way that it's that difficult for Eleven Labs to code it in so that your professional voice knows that maybe when you put it inside angled brackets, this part, that it's just directing what type of way to say this, but don't actually say it. Because right here, it says you will also have to somehow remove the prompts. So you're going to have to remove this later in editing as the AI will read exactly what you give it. Now, it does say that the AI can also sometimes infer the intent and emotion from the text context even without the use of tags and here you can see that they're not using these prompts after the stuff in quotation marks they do say that it's not always perfect since you are relying on the ai discretion to understand if something is sarcastic funny or just plain from the context of the text so what i'm going to do is we're actually going to test this feature out right now so over here, I wanted to say, you better subscribe to my channel, he shouted angrily. You don't want me to hurt you, do you? He whispered eerily. So let's see exactly how it's going to generate this, and then I'll do it without these prompts afterwards. And let's see which one turns out to be better. So let's click generate. Oh, you better subscribe to my channel, he shouted angrily. You don't want me to hurt you, do you? He whispered eerily. So I'm actually really displeased with that result because there was no whispering in the second part at all. And it didn't really sound too believable. It was too rushed. I think the first part was too rushed. But curious what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know. But now what I'll do is I'll remove the he shouted angrily and basically the prompts outside of the quotation marks. I'm going to remove. And now I'm going to generate once more. And let's see what it does. You better subscribe to my channel. You don't want me to hurt you, do you? So I'm actually not too mad at the way that came out. But again, I can't get it to whisper, obviously, if I don't prompt it to. And if I tell it to whisper, it didn't in any case. And honestly, even if it did, it just says he whispered afterwards. And then I have to edit it out. So it could get a little bit annoying. But now let's dive into pacing. So here they say that based on varying user feedback and test results, it's been theorized that using a singular long sample for voice cloning has brought more success for some compared to using multiple smaller samples. What they're talking about here is they're talking about the way 
that you train your professional voice. So the data that you submit to them, make sure that it's one singular long sample or maybe two long samples versus just many small samples. And they say that the theory of why this is happening is that AI stitches these samples together without any separation, causing pacing issues and faster speech. This is likely why some people have reported fast talking clones. And what we just listened to now was a little bit fast, but in all honesty, it doesn't always generate audio clips for me that sound like they're fast paced. So for me, I think I'm okay with the pace it's going, but they suggest here that to control the pacing of the speaker, you can use the same approach as an emotion, where you write in a style similar to that of a book. While it's not a perfect solution, it can help improve the pacing and ensure that the AI generates a voiceover at the right speed. With this technique, you can create high quality voiceovers that are both customized and easy to listen to. And all they're doing here is they're separating things with commas. And apparently that can help in the pacing, or at the very least, it could help there be a slight pause between certain statements. So you can kind of segment what you wish the voice clone to create in the voice it's going to create it in. So with that being said, we pretty much covered everything there is to know about 11 labs at this point. Make sure to check out the channel for tons of more AI content. I cover a lot of tutorials in various types of AI platforms and also AI concepts. I'm knee deep in this space and I have no plans to stop anytime soon. So I appreciate you guys for watching this video in its entirety and I will see all of you in the next one.